And a good Thursday afternoon, everyone, from Dublin Jerome High School. Welcome to Facebook Live, previewing week three of the high school football season. I'm Dave Tapura, along with Frank Durant. Jared Ulrey will be joining us in just a couple of moments. But our special guest to start the program today is the coach of the Dublin Jerome Celtics, Jock Gesselwich. First off, thank you for coming up. Absolutely. Of while you guys are practicing on the field. One and one, coming off a, a, quite a game, you know, following Frank Sweets last week down at Pickerington North. What are some of the things that you picked up from that game, and you know, how would you judge where you are through two games right now? Uh, you know, the biggest thing we picked up is we got to play four quarters. I think we came out, we played the third quarter, uh, like our air was on fire, and we really didn't play a poor fourth quarter either. Um, that second half, I think, is more indicative of who we can be as a football team than that first half. So we've got to be consistent. We've known that the whole time. Um, we've got to find a way to do that. Coach, you're coming off back-to-back -back playoff performances, the first time in school history. What's going to be easier I'm turning on here? Um, I don't know. We just show up and work. We show up and work. We have fun. We play hard. And I think that's the biggest thing is, is playing hard. You, you guys have covered our games. We don't have a huge number of recruits. We don't have a lot of kids going and playing college. Um, but our kids just play as hard as they possibly can. And if you do that, you tend to give yourself a chance more times than not. And I'm sure that will enter, you know, obviously enters every week, but certainly in a rivalry game. You get Dublin Coughlin from just down the road tomorrow night. Uh, first time since you, you played since 13, I believe is what I was told. Um, uh, yeah. What, I guess, you know, tell us a little bit about this rivalry and this game to play across town school. What's that like for you and the guys? Well, we've always played Scioto since I've been here. Yeah. And that's, that's been a really good game for us. Um, I think that that's been a positive rivalry. You know, everyone wants to beat everyone, but, but it's... Uh, it's got a positive feel to it. Uh, this one is, it may be a little bit different, I don't know. Um, we're excited for it, we're stoked for it. Um, I don't necessarily know if, uh, I don't know how this one's gonna go. It'll be fun though, we'll have fun. So. What is some of the keys to the drone to come on that top? We have to play great. Uh, we have to play great. They have a lot of really good kids. Uh, they're 280 across the offensive front. Uh, they've had some movements that are, that are really, really good. Uh, magically show up, so um, you know we've got to figure out how do we negate that and, and allow ourselves to play our best game. Coach, final day of practice before that game, yeah. we'll let you get on back to practice. Thanks a lot, Bob. Thank you, Coach Bob. Guess which is down the field. Our Jared already comes in here to the right. Um, these crosstown games are always fun. It's not the only one we're going to talk about today. But uh, sure. just just looking at, at Kaufman and Jerome, uh, some of you guys' thoughts right, on teams that you know about. Well, after last week against Pick North, Jerome played probably the best game I've seen them play in a couple of years. Had a chance to win at the end, and that can only give them confidence going into a game like this. And also next week against Dublin Sayota. Mm -hmm. well, one thing that's kind of interesting to me when I was looking at some of the stats from Kaufman's games and Jerome's games this past week, Jerome actually, the quarterback threw for like 300 some yards, right? Hey, Jelm. Yeah, well, they had one receiver catch nine passes. Here you got Kaufman, their quarterback threw for 100 yards. I mean, we kind of, you know, you kind of think of Kaufman as this, you know, the team that always creates a great quarterback and throws for 300 some yards. And maybe this quarterback's really good. I'm not saying he's not, but they seem to be uh, focusing maybe more on balance right now. And it was it's funny when he talked about the dynamic that he and Kaufman or they and Kaufman are in different divisions. So I mean, it's for pride. I mean, it's like you know with with Scioto when they play. You know, you got a league title implications even even though it's going to be early on. But he said next week is when the two of them are playing. Plus, I think there's a better relationship between Jerome coaches and Scioto coaches than Jerome and Kaufman. It's just a sense I get. There's just a friendly rivalry with that Scioto. Sailors in the same league, which is the That kind of reminds me of when we were talking to Brian Wild, he and Johnson Taggart are so yeah. close. But when they played last week, and that was quite a game, 14-0. Uh, Davidson uh, beat Darby last week. Moving on, uh, you're going to be hitting the road tomorrow, going about, what, 75 miles to the west. It's about 90, actually, from my house. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, you don't see the kind of matchup that he's going to see much. You've got the Division One champion, Pickerington Central, and the Division Three champion in Trotwood Madison. That's going to be exciting for everybody involved, and I'm sure you're looking forward to covering it tomorrow night. Well, i got to be honest and say I don't really know what to expect from Trotwood Madison yeah. because they, uh, in their Week 2 game, they lost to a team from Chicago 33-6. to And, you know, from everything I gathered, that was – a lot of people weren't really expecting to see that score. Now, does that mean Trotwood's down? I don't think that necessarily means that. I mean, if you talk to Coach Sherrod, he thinks that this team that Trotman lost to is really, really good. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, maybe that maybe that doesn't necessarily mean that much, but I mean I can tell you Pick Central's gonna be hungry. Well, and that's another thing they have in common. I haven't realized Jot would put a team from Chicago. Of course, Pick Central oh, yeah, that's one. Now I'm gonna take it it was not the Phillips Academy, or no. you would have mentioned No, that. it was a team from the Semi, I believe. Yes, um, absolutely a big basketball school. But yeah, I mean last year Pick Central lost their only game to Trial and Madison. That's right. So you gotta figure they're gonna come out real hungry. Um, I guess when you think about uh, where Picture Central's been so far this year, they had the they had the huge exposure game in week one on ESPN, and then week two, they you know they kind of had a not necessarily a week off, but I mean they, you know, they played they played a Canadian team that's in its second year as a program, mm -hmm. so basically a lot of their ones played maybe like a quarter and a half I think, uh, and then it was a lot of backups, a lot of guys getting rest. They were working on reps and things like that. I mean. I, you know, Coach Sherrod said they did get some things out of that game that maybe they can that they can learn from and you know, just get some extra, extra film, I guess. But yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, this kind of kind of strange going from one extreme to, to the other. For them. Absolutely. We mentioned Crosstown Libraries earlier. Obviously, we talked about one off the top. There's another one. We're going to talk about two more. The first of them tomorrow night involves Peter Davidson mm -hmm. that we already mentioned. They're two and zero, and they take on Hillier Bradley. That's also two and zero. So the second of the uh, three games this year that are involved. All Hilliard teams. Uh, some of your impressions looking at the Wildcats is uh, coming off a shutout. Win. Well, I know Davidson going for the sweep of Hilliard, I guess. Yeah. Um, a little different offense will face this week, a more of a spread offense compared to Darby and Triple Action. Um, again, two straight shutouts, so Brian White's really been going at his defense so far. Oh, so. What are they, 4 0 in the last four games against uh, Hilliard schools, I think? No, no Bradley is. Bradley. Bradley's 4 0 in the last two. Bradley's lost. Um, Davidson lost the last two games at Bradley, so uh -huh. I know that's uh, that's in their minds. They didn't beat them since 2015. This this is kind of a, a proving game for Bradley too, if you think about it, because you've got uh, Bradley has won a couple of really really tight games so far. Uh, as a matter of fact, the first team they beat I think was only four and six last year. So we're gonna yeah, yeah so we're gonna kind of learn is Bradley how how good Bradley really is. Right, yeah, they beat uh, Philly, as you mentioned, and beat uh, Stowe and Falls last week, a team that's coached by former Bitterings and North Coach Tom Falls. That's right. Last week, 22-19. Uh, Another team you know well, Westerville Central Warhawks. They're looking to go to 3-0. Uh, they take on 2-0 East North Academy, so obviously both of them will be good to 3-0. One thing that jumped out when I was reading your preview in preparation was they're looking forward to playing a game on grass, yes. which they already did, I guess, and won one, but it seemed like they're looking forward to that kind of challenge again this week. Well, they did right the first game. That was the first time in years they told me they played on a game on grass. So they, knew, they know they can do it. They can play well. But they, they're playing really good East North East, yeah, East Four is really good. It, 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 we're going to learn, you know, we're going we're to see what's what's the difference between. The Westville Central has a lot more numbers. Almost all the city, you know, the numbers are down for almost all the city. East Four probably has one of the bigger numbers than anybody. But will they be able to? You know, how, how are they going to? How are they going to stack up against a, a much bigger Westville Central? Team? Warhawks won that game 57 to 28 last year, so a little more than double them up. Uh, looking again, the third Crosstown rivalry we're going to talk about today actually takes place tonight, and both of us will be there. It's 1-1 one one Central Crossing at 0-2 Grove City. Crossing's 2-0 in this rivalry, and they're coming off a really convincing win uh, over Beechcroft last week, 33-8. Uh, four sacks for the defense, got fumble recovery. Uh, Pierre France had three touchdowns. He had four touchdowns in the game last week, or last year, I'm sorry, against the Greyhounds. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Grove City side. I know they're struggling. But where do, you, where do you see them after the loss? They're coming off a loss last week to Western Central. When they talked to Coach Varney, he was optimistic. He thought the one game came around a little bit to Big Central, led by um, DJ Gatewood. Mm -hmm. So he's hoping they continue to build an end. I guess when you play Central Boston or Franklin Knights, the records really don't matter this stage. 49 48 last year, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. That happens tonight. You guys are going to be there until like well, a we, might <laughs> we might be there a while. <laughs> well, good, maybe TV will run out of commercial time. There will be any time outs or anything. You've got the next game, too, right? I do, as a matter of fact. And that being, well, no, I cover one of the teams. That's right, right, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Scott Gerfman will be there. Cincinnati Wenton Woods, uh, who was the D2 runner up last year. They lost to Akron Hoban in the final. They're coming to Upper Arlington to take on the 1 1 Golden Bears. Uh, another big test. Uh, I, I think it was, you know, you just mentioned that 49 48 Central score between Crossing and Grove City last year. Well, Arlington won a 49 42 game over. Uh, Finley last yeah. year. So their offense is starting to click, which it really did in the fourth quarter against Reynoldsburg in week one. That carried over. 
But they're seeming a team with a lot of good recruits. Obviously, a state runner up doesn't bring back everybody, but it brings back some important players. This will be a big test to see where they are. I mean, obviously, you never you never want to get to two losses, but they've had a really tough schedule. Woods doesn't. I mean, I can't remember them playing a lot of Division One teams. Maybe I, no, I, I can't. You know, I mean, they, they've played they played teams like Watterson and Sales over the years. Um, and I think, sales last year. Right. I mean, traditionally. They bring a really, really heavy running game, and they are really, really good in the trenches. They have a very good defensive line for everything out here. Uh, so yeah, it should be. It's a really good test for both teams. I, I, I think this could be a quick type of game. Absolutely, and Arlington playing well right now on quarterback Sandy Sass. Of course, Chris Schweitzer was the running back with the game winning touchdown rush for about 140 last week uh, in the win up at Finley. All Central Catholic League battle in one respect. I know it's, it comes with a caveat with Reedy, but they're not going to be playing each other. They, being Reedy and Hartley, aren't going to play each other for a little while. They, they meet tomorrow night. Well, uh, the next two years, Reedy will play St. Charles, and then the two years after that, they're playing Water Center to Sales, and the two years after that, they're playing Water Center to Sales. So they're not going to play Hartley again for seven years. Now, they've played each other 55 years in a row. If that, you know, if that kind of says a little bit about what this rivalry has looked like in the years. Yeah. And, and before Coach Birchfield got to Reed, got to Hartley, it was actually a you know very back and forth type of matchup for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe maybe in Birchfield's first season, I think Reed might have gotten them by like it was a blowout win for Reed, if I remember right. Uh, but Hartley has had the advantage the last several years, and uh, you know I, I think on paper, you know Hartley is going to have that they've got more athletes, and uh, it's going to be a big challenge for Reed. Uh, Reedy's coming off a huge win this week against West Jefferson. That's the kind of win that probably is going to make their season uh, because they just have a really tough schedule to start off with. Jack Foley had a big game. He tied for our player of the week honors with Western quarterback Deshaun Evans, who you were doing a feature on this yeah, Sunday's paper. Yeah, talking yesterday afternoon. And he's just glad to be back. Coming off a broken ankle last, last season, week four, against a team they're playing next year, and playing for the Heights. The offense hasn't been the issue. They've scored nearly. Um, 76, they threw 76 points so far. So the offense is an issue. Coach Rio's down there. He's after this. He can get this They take on Delaware tomorrow night, I believe. It's up to a 2 0 start of their head coach, Scott Wessel. Right, and I talked to Coach Wetzel earlier this week, and his comment to me was Wessel really probably should be 2 0. I mean, he's, he's really impressed with what he saw from them, especially on offense, like you were saying. Uh, and last year, Wessel's only win was against Delaware. It's right to add you know, some interest in this matchup. Absolutely, and a few, a few other games we do want to uh, touch on. Well, that really segued well in the format. Right. Delaware and Weston out there, they need to try that well. Uh, Kilborn, where they need Kilborn's 0-2. Uh, they played a couple close games so far. They take on one of one Groveport uh, tomorrow night. Uh, Jared, I believe you covered the Groveport win last week. That was uh, exciting. That was yeah. That's right. At Fortress Hope, it's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Groveport, I think, is they're, they're starting to figure some things out. I mean, obviously, you lose 12 games in a row. you got a long way to go, but I think that they – Really, we're really happy with the progress that they've been making the last couple of weeks. They found a couple of really good athletes, and they were able to get them out in space against Hamilton, and that helped them. Looking Heights is taking on New Albany. Uh, you and I saw New Albany last week when they beat Dublin Scioto. What was it, 38 to 21, I think? And for a while, it was 31 to 7. Uh, you know, from a you cover Scioto, what were some of your thoughts on New Albany having not seen them this year? First year head coach, but they haven't missed a beat with New Albany. Uh, their offense was really, really good. Quarterback looked dynamic. And and they're, they're running back, running back some receivers for seven, too. And they have a deep stable up too. Yeah. Micaiah Burton, Alex Cox, among others, and their quarterback, Luke Buter, is in his first year uh, as a starter. Final game we want to mention, you mentioned Fortress Obets. Bexley broke a 12-game losing streak last week at Camp Memorial, and they take on the aforementioned Hamilton Township Rangers tomorrow. Yeah, and I know that, uh, I mean, Hamilton Township was beating Grove for 14-7 in that game. Um, and they, you know, they had some breakdowns in the second half, and I know uh, Coach Savino, he was kind of, you know, it feels like they're not that far away from being a, a much better team. I know heading into the preseason, or heading into the season, he was optimistic that they were going to show some improvement from after going 46 last year. And of course, Bexley obviously has improved too. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And that was a tough road for them to hold after they had a 10 0 regular season two years ago and then to go winless last year. But yeah, 16 0 over Camp Memorial. They lost a lot of players there. They did. Yes, they did. Absolutely. We are here at Dublin Jerome. Uh, the big reason for that is they're playing Dublin Kaufman tomorrow night. If you happen to come out here, uh, meet some of our staff at 530 as part of the tailgate. Frank Doretta will be there. Uh, some of our editors, some of our staffers will be there. Come over, ask him a question, say anything you want. 
nice, preferably, and they'll also give you a drink of water, a bottle of water, I believe as well, which uh, I'm still going to need. It's kind of humid and warm out here. But, uh, gentlemen, three weeks down, we're going to be 30% of the way through the regular season after right. tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, and we will be back with you next Thursday at 3.30. We're not sure where yet, but when we figure it out, we'll let you know via social media. For Jared Ulrey and Frank Durana, I'm Dave Perretta. So long, everybody.